Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the continual day one update of the Mono Righteous Fire character. You guys saw the previous video, we were in the campaign. We just now finished Katava uh, and ascended for our Uber Lab. So first off, I want to state, um, unlike the campaign run, this one's a lot more expensive. This character is at least, I would say, about 10 divines, or maybe closer to 10 to 15. The primary sync of the divines, it was like 5 divine for my Eyes of the Great Wolf, which you really do not need. I just didn't feel like crafting uh, an amulet, and I probably will later. The other one is, you know, my six link ivory tower. Definitely don't need a six link to start mapping. The Indigon is a bit pricey as well. Definitely don't need this to start mapping. Uh, and then the other one would be the Watcher's Eye that I'm currently running, which you don't need. It's basically for the extra energy shield based off of your mana. Um, not super important. It gives me about like 1.1k. So before we get started, we're going to talk about a little mechanic here that kind of goes well together. So I'm currently running a Brutal Restraint with the Trader node. Now the primary focus of my Brutal Restraint is it gives me Onslaught, uh, which is, where is the Onslaught? There it is. So Onslaught, so I can go faster. You guys know me, I like going fast. So we have Onslaught here with Trader. By emptying two of our flasks, um, we gain, what is that, eight charges every five seconds. We can have close to 100% uptime on the Core Skating Elixir. I had to retake this video and this Core Skating Elixir is still going off from the previous take along with my Bismuth. My Bismuth Flask is currently giving me a ridiculous amount of resistance and that is very good because it frees up a lot of suffixes on our gear so we can craft for a lot of intelligence. Okay, so with that being said, let's talk about what we're currently reserving with our Prism Guardian. A Prism Guardian at the moment is about 20 chaos. It's not that expensive, 2530. So I'm currently running in that Prism Guardian, Malevolence, Determination, and Purity of Fire. Now the Purity of Fire is low level. It's currently level, uh, all, actually all my auras here are low level since we're just out of the campaign. Purity of Fire though is kind of cool because if you buy a 21 Purity of Fire, you put it in Prism Guardian, it goes 23. 23 gets a break point on max res. So the regen is going to skyrocket a little bit later, which means I'm definitely not going to need the regeneration on the Eyes of the Great Wolf. So that's why it's easy to kind of do that. So then the next part is I have a little bit of blood magic here, which you don't fully need, but the blood magic is just for the clarity. So I can activate that Watcher's Eye to get the nice ES boost. And then I have a Divine Blessing because all of this is currently on life. To do those three big auras, you just need the 20% life reservation efficiency. And then I have like a level one clarity to trigger the Watcher's Eye. The next one is Discipline on Divine Blessing. Don't really know if I want this at the moment. It's giving me 1k energy shield. I would much rather permanently run um, Grace, sorry, Eternal Blessing. Eternal Blessing is really nice because it's a permanent aura, unlike the other ones where you have to Divine Blessing, you have to keep clicking every 10 seconds. And Grace would synergize very well with the 2% evasion per 10 int. So we currently have close to 1,000 int. That is quite a bit of evasion to scale Grace. All right, so with that being said, I wanted to go ahead and jump into my first map with you guys. The build will probably look a little bit scuffed. I have played it now for, uh, the, the well, it's, it's seven hours old, so it's not that old yet. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. I just have a random map here. It's tier six. Let's jump in. So one big thing to note, I don't have anything crafted on my boots in terms of, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't have any, uh, like, uh, acres on yet, and I don't have any source of fire exposure. So we definitely want to incorporate a source of fire exposure. And my gems are currently Control Destruction, Ellie Focus, uh, Arcane Devotion, Righteous Fire, Swift Affliction, Arcane Surge, and Burning Damage. Arcane Surge works out really well here because we used to use Arcane Surge way back in the day before Life Tap became a thing. And now what's really awesome is Arcane Surge gives spell damage as it always did, which scales the new Righteous Fire. So just like normal, I can't trigger Arcane Surge uh, with my normal RF. And remember, you need to click your flasks one time at the beginning of each map to get them started. So currently we're rocking 120k tooltip, but we don't even have Arcane Surge yet. So let's go ahead and smack them up. Oh, we also don't have the big nodes on the tree. You need to come down here for big Arcane Surge scaling. Let's go ahead and just smack something there. Our tooltip is now 174. Let's go ahead and click... Uh, that, that's a 463,000 tooltip. I have now already passed my level 98 Righteous Fire build. With that being said, let's get started. So currently what we have is um, 
I am using I am using Arcane Cloak, which essentially dumps my MP. And Arcane Cloak dumping my MP is going to be used to constantly trigger Indigon's buff. Uh, on my tree, I have 2% mana gain on kill, which you can find located right here on Thrill Killer. Um, the 2% mana on kill is enough to, to have this like pretty much automated. I'll probably lower the cooldown of my guard skill just to try to trigger uh, the cloak even faster. Now, the other thing is I took 10% mana recoup on my tree, which doesn't seem like it's doing anything yet, but the goal is for this character to farm the really rippy content that my other character was farming, and that really rippy content does a lot of damage. And a lot of damage means that I'm taking a lot of damage, which hopefully means I'm recouping a lot of damage to kind of just scale Indigon more and more and more. Single target, again, not like super crazy. It's really good for just pure RF. Um, the single target will need to be scaled further by leveling up my flammability, applying sources of exposure, etc. I also do not currently have any um, charms yet on this character. I'm running Oath of the Maj, but Maj isn't doing anything because I mean, it's just giving me 30% movement speed because I don't have a shield charge set up yet. So that's that's kind of something else. Overall, though, the, uh, the scaling of this character just seems out of this world compared to any other RF build that I have played. Like, I'm, I mean, it's really kind of ridiculous. Um, it's pretty crazy. So the one thing that I'm weak to right now, I don't have freeze immunity. Freeze immunity we will fix pretty easily by just uh, doing our Pantheon. And then I don't have like, uh, what's the other immunity I don't have? There's another one. Oh, I have corrupted blood immunity, which I'll probably do by going into a cluster jewel setup. And then the purpose of the cluster jewel setup is so that I can uh, stick two jewels in there. That's pretty much about it. I just wanted to give you guys the rundown of kind of how the character is progressing. So that's pretty much about it. If you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, but Sundays. See you guys all in Rayclast.